Hello and welcome to our weekly live. I am Christine Josty of Real Something Pretty and I'm so glad you joined us. Um, you guys, the replayers always get to watch this part where my lives, um, people don't always get to see it. So just hang tight and make sure that we are on and all that stuff is good. The systems are going. Um, but I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have some fun crafting ahead of you. I have some fun projects um, for you to make. And so hopefully you'll like them and you want to um, copy them. I think you will. Um, all right. So let's see. I just got notified that YouTube is working and we'll just make sure. Let's see. I just saw one person just popped on and we'll see whoever it was. Please post in the comments that you can hear me just to make sure that everything is good to go. Um, I have been known to make um, videos with no sound. <laughs> So that's not good for anybody. Um, all right, all systems to go, says Mary Lou. Awesome, thank you. And happy belated birthday yesterday to you, Mary Lou. Um, your card was mailed today. I made it yesterday. You and Tracy have the same birthday. So both your cards were made yesterday, but they're mailed this today. All right, Nancy is all set, awesome. Awesome, awesome. All righty, so I some fun things. I actually, the project we're gonna do today, um, I did a couple years ago, but I think it's, worth resharing, especially for anyone who's new and um, and hasn't seen this project before. Um, we're going to make a, a frame, a little shadow box frame, and um, you can decorate it. But I'm going to use the mini alphabet dies, which is what I've been trying to um, highlight this month. So that's what we're going to do. All right, Lara's here. Perfect. All right, so let me go to my... There we go. All right. So uh, I just put this here just to remind everyone that celebration ends on February 29th, which is Nancy's birthday. We have lots of February birthdays this month. Um, and so um, everything in this catalog, plus a few other things are all free with a qualifying order. So if you, um, let's see, these ones are like, you know, you can get a stamp set or paper for free. If you would do a $50 order, all those awesome papers. And then some things towards the back. You do a hundred dollar order, you have the option you get a stamp set plus an embossing folder or a different stamp set. Um, so, anyways, this ends on February 29th. And the other thing, um, before we get into the project, give people time to get on. Hi, Debbie. Um, so I think I said till February 24th, I think. Um, if you order the mini alphabet dies, and that's what we're gonna use highlight again today. And I just love how all the letters are on just one die. So just other ones you've had like little letters, you know, different things. I just love how they're all on one die. Um I had made a tutorial and this is the thing. So I could kind of do my little ad. Um, you know, you can have a box of letters all in a box or you can have them organized. I actually put them in this one for the photograph and didn't move them over, but you can put all your, I have little mini envelopes all labeled. And so if, say I needed a letter I, then I can just open up my envelope and then I have some different colored eyes in there. So it just makes it a little bit easier. And then I can put it back in alphabetical order um, to find things. And you can also, because the die cuts the whole sheet of letters, you can store them in the back. So I gave you the directions for both the smaller box and also I created this larger box with this accordion, oops, the accordion file so you could put all the letters in an individual file. So it just makes it a little bit bigger. All right, so that offer, the, um, if you ordered the dies, you can get this whole tutorial and you can print it or you can just look at the computer is for free or you can purchase it for $15. All right, enough of that stuff out of the way. All right, hi Kim. So this is what we're gonna, these are older ones. Um, we're gonna make a different, uh, newer updated version. Um, but these are, um, I'm calling them shadow box frames because they do, it has a little um, dimension in there. Um, and they're small. Let's see what size it is. They measure four and a half by four and a half. So they are small, little, cute little things. So this one I have in my little, um, I have a little tea area in my house. And so I have this in there. And then this one I made for Christmas. Isn't that so cute? So you can kind of make them any way you want, but the, the frame itself is constructed the same. So that's what I'm going to show you today. All right. So the, let's see, I have three. I'm going to show you three, one completely beginning to end. And the other two, I'm just going to show you um, parts. All right. So the one that we're doing completely, let's see, does it, oh, 
are, we're going to use the Garden Meadow stamp and dies. So this um, is not in the catalog, but it is available. Um, it's in the online exclusive section, just so you know where to find it. Let's see. Mary Lou says, I love the shadow box frames. I made several of them and gave them with gifts. Yeah, I made, I made, um, that first time and I saved it. Um, it was a wedding gift, a part of the wedding gift I gave money to, but I made, um, it was really pretty with that. Um, oh, I forget the name of the paper, but it was like gold and, um, sea foam foil. Uh, I don't remember. It was really pretty. And what I did is actually I made two of them and I only decorated the front of one and I put them two to, I glued them two together so you can even make them thicker. I'm just going to make single today, but you have lots of options. They make wonderful gifts. So I'm glad you did that, Mary Lou. All right. So we're going to use this paper. This is from the Be Mine um, designer series pack. Hi, Karen. Um, and so what I love about this paper, just the bright, fun and bright colors, is it's, even though it's called Be Mine, I think that's what it's called, um, it's not just Valentine's. So look at, neither one of these are Valentine's. So this is Flower and Stripes. And that is the cute little bees. And there are little hearts in there, but, um, and flowers. So it's a great pack of paper and it's just bright and happy. So, like I said, the frame is going to be, and I have a template, um, so it's eight and a half by eight and a half, so I have to trim that down. Open this up, move that aside. So you can make this with regular cardstock. Um, my snowman one, this is just made out of thick white cardstock, and then that's obviously with designer paper. So you can use either powdered paper or cardstock because it's eight and a half by eight and a half. So we have a nice option. All right, there we go. Eight and a half by eight and a half. So I could score it on here, but I just want to show you what I call a trick or a tip. I'm going to use my, oh, it doesn't even fit on the whole screen, my scoreboard. All right. So, so this is, you know, some tools are necessary and some are nice to have. This is a nice to have. Um, this opens up. It's where I store my little um, pegs. And so you get, I don't know, you get a bunch of them. I think I need, that's too many. I think I only need some. And so what these pegs is they fit in all of these notches. So when you want, so this is good when you want to do multiples. I wouldn't do this if I was just making one thing. Um, but if you want to do multiples, so then you don't have to think about like the measurements of where you're scoring and it does all scoring. There's all these grooves in here. And then there's a little slot down here and I just have it closed by tape because mine keeps popping out, but it's a stylus, which I'm going to use and you get two tips. So I'll explain that in a second. All right. So I have my eight by eight. This is my template. So um, we're going to score on both sides, which really ends up doing all four sides. I'm at a, every half inch. So half one, one and a half and two. And so this is where my tip is. I could do over here, but you see I'm crossing over. And so that's a little uncomfortable, but since I know I'm doing both sides, I'm just going to score on this side. Um, so I'm going to mark off a half. So I'm going to put this little peg there and then just the other half is, oops, is seven and a half and then the other half. So I'm doing four halves here. All right. So this really was what I'll do over here, but because it's um, symmetrical and I'm going to be doing both sides, I can score on this side. And when I move it, you'll see it will be on that side. The other thing is I have my stylus. I marked it with a paint marker just so I know that this end is thinner than this end. I recently learned that the thicker end is much better for pattern paper and the thinner, the smaller ball here is better for cardstock. The reason why the bigger ball is better for designer paper is because you're less chance of ripping it because it's a thinner paper than the cardstock. It can rip if you want to use score. So if you use the bigger one, you have less chances of ripping. 
All right, so see how much easier, oops, except when you don't go on the track. It's just easy to score. So remember I said we we're gonna do two sides, so now I'm just gonna flip it. We're actually gonna do all four sides, not two sides. I wrote that wrong. So because it's symmetrical, so now the time I move this over here, this really did get those half inches on that side. So sometimes I do score my paper kind of backwards, so to speak. It's just easier for my hand to go here than for my hand to go over here. And I just want to make sure it stays in there. All right, so now all four sides are going to have the score marks, which you might not be able to see. But they are, yeah, I don't know if you can, you probably can't see them, but they're all scored. And you are up early. Hello, hello. All right. Oh, and Joanne from Virginia, your name is new to me. Hello and welcome to Mill Something Pretty. All right. So for 3D items, I really do like making templates. And so um, I just pulled it out because I made, I was showing that I made these frames at least two, maybe three years ago. Um, but that's what's great about projects is you just renew them with new things. And so I knew I could do it. So you have all these score marks and I'm going to actually just cut off this whole big square. So you'll see, hopefully, I think it's easier this way. And I do like to show you the easier ways of doing things. So this whole, and it is a square, this four of the little, um, um, boxes and then four going down. So I'm going to do that on all four sides. Hey, Anne, everyone's saying hi to you. You must be some like a superstar or something. <laughs> An international pickleball star. Um, so for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, Anne is a demonstrator in Australia. And she has become my very good friend. And she came to visit me in the fall, summer, in August. Um, and we play pickleball together, which is why I'm saying she's an international pickleball star. Um, but Anne and I do lives together once a month. So our live is next month, next week, next Thursday, not this Thursday, today's Tuesday, but next Thursday is our joint live together. And it is at 8 p.m. No, 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 hold. We had to move it. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time next week. So I hope you can join us. All right. So basically, it's like a cross, right? And so, but you see my template here has these little things here. So here's what I'm going to do. These, this is also an increment of a half inch on both those sides. So I didn't score them yet. So this is what I'm going to do. This is, I don't think I did this the first time. I don't think. I'm going to just fold two sides over and um, put it up like that. And then I'm going to take my stylus and I'm just going to go over. I'm going to do a half inch again. So here's a half inch. This is at four and a half. This is at four. Hopefully you can see this on the screen. Yep. And I'm just going to go down to the second. So I have a, half, a score mark here, a score mark here, and a score mark here. I'm just going down to the second one. And I'm just, I am going to cross over it. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm just going down two boxes. Score, score. I'm going to do the same thing. Just go down two boxes, at the half inch over, the half inch over, down two boxes. So now, I'm done with this. For now, I think I have to do that again on one of the other projects because I wanted to show you again. So now I'm going to... Make sure I do this right. Yes, I'm going to cut those two boxes that I just scored off right there. So I've already cut one of those and one of those. And then I'm just going to notch these two right here. So it looks like I have that shape. And I'm going to do that on this side too. Make stickers, my scissors are sticky. I'm going to go down those two, but just cut where, where I did those score and then just notch like that. Okay, and I'm going to do this side as well. And I'm just cutting from this corner right to that corner where that score line is. 
Ah, I need to clean my scissors because they are sticky. All right, so then when I open it up, and I only want to do it on two sides, not four sides. So it looks like that. And I will take a picture of my template and put that on there. But that, I think, is an easier way of doing that instead of trying to deal with all these score likes. All right. Oh, we have more people on there. Deidre is here. Hello. Welcome to Mail Something Pretty. All right. So we are making these fun shadow box frames. So now what I'm going to do is actually turn it to the, because I want the flower to be my frame size. And now I'm going to um, kind of fold on all of those score lines. So this will take a second. Let's see. Anne says, up early. Yeah, I knew you have lots to get done. Oh, I'm glad you're watching. Anne is hosting a retreat, a craft retreat. If anyone wants to hop a plane and go over to Australia, I would love to and attend her retreat. She has been busy, busy. All right. So that, and then I get to do this side. I was just thinking I should have done this for the other projects that I have already partially done, but I did not fold them yet, but it's okay. And one last side here. This is the one where I didn't, I, I jumped my score line. And I just want to make sure it is I fold it because otherwise I'll have a crooked frame. There we go. Once in a while with those scoreboards, I'm mean, really not paying attention. Um, you can jump a line. <laughs> All right. So here we go. So hopefully you can kind of see what's going to happen. These are just going to fold right in and you're going to get your frame like that. You get a little nice little mitered edge because we did that cut. Um, so you have the option at this point to either, if you're using double-sided paper, which I am, I could use, I could just leave it like this, but what if it's a pattern you don't like and you don't want to use it? So you can, um, cut another pattern. So I'm going to cut a four and a quarter square piece of paper. This pattern is a little bit less, it's still busy, but it's a little less busy than the one that's on there. And I'm going to show you, that's why I'm doing two other ones. Show you options. That's why I haven't um, glued those in yet. So I'm going to take my, the pattern I want you to see, and I'm just going to glue that right there in the center. There's a little border around like where the score line is, and that's fine because it's, you're not going to see it. So I'm going to score this. Oh yeah, I'm like, I like the stripe, but that doesn't go with what I'm doing. Well, Karen, I'm glad you like it. All right, so when you put, so this piece of paper has a direction. Before I glue it down, I, you can decide actually if where you want your mitered corners to be. If you want them, I suppose it really doesn't matter. Since I'm putting it actually doesn't matter. Putting in the pattern paper, it doesn't matter. All right, and the other thing, and this is bringing me hard for you to see because it's a pattern is so similar. The other thing to consider is when you're picking your paper for your frame, now this paper, this flower paper, the direction, there's no direction to it. But if you had like stripes or if you had, um, stripes actually would work. If you had um, like even like the flower, how this is directional because you're using, um, one piece to fold it over, like the top would have these flowers would be upside down and some of these would be sideways. So you just kind of pay attention to the direction of your paper. All right. So now I'm just gonna fold those in and glue it down. So I'm just gonna put glue on the last one here. I'm just kinda, of, you're making a box, which I'll show you in a second. If you wanna get, Helps if you take like a pencil or something and you could even put that in there if you wanted to press down on it to make the glue stick. You just want to, as best you can, make sure all your angles are at 90 degrees. 
So here's that box. Okay. Hold on. Let me push that down so you can see it better. So you can kind of see that this is there's a box right there. And so you, as best you can, make that 90 degrees. So I'm going to do the same thing on this one. And I do think the glue works best, better than like a tape. And it's helpful to have this pencil here so I can press it down. And I'm pushing it in just to make sure it like kind of locks in. So then when these two go over, you have those, those kind of the miter, the, the slant helps with the mitered edge and it goes right over on top. And then you can push those two together and then we'll push those two together. And then you can squeeze it all. All right, so I'm gonna do that edge. Roll that over. Now if you want, actually I'll do it on the other side. You can add glue. This is where on the videos I need patience. I need to hold it and let it stick for a second before I go on to my next step. Because um, if I don't, it will undo. Um, I'm going to still put the glue on the edge here, but if you want, you can put a little glue on the edge here and a little bit here. Roll it under. All right, and then hold it down. So we have this cute little frame box, which is upside down at the moment, but I'll turn it over. It's I. Here we go. That looks better. Isn't that cute? So then you can decorate however you want. So, and again, I have two more to do if you missed it, if you came in late, or you want to see it again. Um, yeah, Mary Lou, it really does. And I probably, I'll do that on the other ones. That little extra tiny bit of glue on the sides really helps. So I already, you can tell we're making spring one. Um, did my wheelbarrow, which again, I um, stamped from here and I colored it in. I kind of matched the colors, although I introduced some some uh, bubble bath. And again, this is on the um, online exclusive section of the store. It's just not in the catalog, but it is available. So I'm going to pop that up because that's what the shadow boxes are really good about. What I have to decide is I'm going to write spring. So two things. I have to decide which color, yellow or, or this um, lemon lime twist. And do I want to have it in the frame or do I want to have it on the outside of the frame? Let's see. Let's see. Let's actually, initially I was thinking yellow, but then I actually think I like the, the green because I like this color. All right. So let me punch out the letters and I already did, which I've showed you before. I put on adhesive, the adhesive sheets. So I cut my, I'll show you. Remember on the frame here, the letters, I have written three by five and a half because that's the size cardstock I need. And then I cut, um, either you could cut the paper a little bit bigger or you could cut the um, adhesive sheets a little bit smaller. You stick it on and then you run it through your machine to get your letters. All right. So I'm running spring and then I'll decide where I want to put them. S P. Oh, I forgot the P S P R I N G. And then what's great about those boxes that I created is so now, cause I'm done with that for now, I can either just file it away or I could pop them all out and put them in my envelopes. And then I have more letters from more projects. All right. I think I'm going to put them because if I raise that up, I think they'll get lost. Yeah. So let me actually put this down first before we put the letters on. All right. So I stamped that with memento ink and then I colored them with the blends markers, which is why you can see the colors have on the other side. And I'm going to, I've showed you this before, so they use the dimensionals, which pop it up a little bit. But if you wanted to go even higher, 
just stack your dimensionals. So we're going to take all the adhesive, the backing off, and I'm just going to put another dimensional on top of here. So it, it, you get a higher raised um, image. So you're kind of like stacking the dimensionals. So sometimes if you want different height of different things, you can make something like one level or something two level or something even three levels. All right, so I'm just going to do my best and center that. And now, so the um, adhesive backing is on here as well. Oh, you know what? I'm going to, let's see. Let's spell spring again. Let's pee. No, my fingers are sticky. S P R I N G. All right. So that's pretty like that is similar, I think, with is that. So they're pretty centered. So I'm going to start with my I since it's an even amount. There's no middle letter. I'm taking the whole backing off, even though I'm only going to stick it on. So I'd say that's center. I'm just going to move it over a little bit. And there's something I forgot to bring up here. If you have an embossing buddy, you can use that and I would put it and it would put a little of that powder and you would get that a little less sticky. I could play with it with my finger or put something, just wipe some of the sticky off because I'm just wanting to stick on the bottom. So now I'm working kind of the other side. I'm just trying to center the word spring. Yeah. Oh, Deidre, you have asked me the perfect question. Um, so Deidre asks, um, she likes my idea for the box of the letters and asks if I had a tutorial. This is not a planted question because I do not know Deidre well enough. Actually, I don't need Deidre at all to ask her to have her plant a question. Let me show you. I did come up with a, a box, a tutorial. So um, I'll finish that in one second. I came up with um, the design of a box and you put your letters in all the envelopes. First, I designed the bigger box with this. I think you can see, yeah, the accordion file. So you can put um, your envelopes in like this. I don't I see a letter in there and so, so forth. So it file, it's like a file and then these would fit at the end. And then, um, I had said in the tutorial, this is a little fiddly putting it together, but it works. You can see this is where I discovered that the stylus, I used the wrong end. So I ripped my paper, but I, it's okay. Um, so I do have a tutorial to answer your question in a long sort of way. Um, if you, you can get it two ways. So here it is. I printed it out. Um, you can, if you order the mini alphabet dies, using a host code. Let me actually see if I can even put it up there while we're talking. Um, here it is. Okay. If you order uh, these using that host code, I will send you this tutorial for free and you can either download it to computer or you can print it. Or if you already have them, or if you're a demonstrator, um, you can purchase this for $15. So I will put that link in the comments um, after. I don't think, know if I can do that at the moment. Good question. All right, so let me go back to here. I'm easily distracted. Um, I think these frames are fun. You know how, like, my mother-in-law has um, these mini flags she puts by her front door, and she changes them by the season? Um, and I, like, they have them both. You can put them in the ground, or you can put them on a flagpole. So I think this is kind of a similar concept you, that you can make a whole bunch of these and then just change them up for the season. You could make birthday ones. You could, depending on how long the name is with the letters, you could write someone's name on there. All right, look at, I didn't center it very well. So sometimes we can move them over a little bit because I didn't press them down. I don't usually press them down until I know I am done. There we go. That's a little more centered. So now I can press lightly on those. I will 
make those so they're not as sticky on the back. Okay, just keep in mind it's paper, you know, so it's delicate. So there you go. So um, you can make one that says summer or 4th of July or um, Halloween, you know, you get it. So you can kind of interchange these per um, the holiday or the season. So like I said, I had made this a Christmas one and that this is a just all year round tea time. But let me show you. Let's make some two, two more. All right. So this one is oops, just knocked my letters over. Okay. And I'm going to actually off camera, but I'm going to sneak a little glue in there with a toothpick and glue that because I glued that side or one side and not the other. And it really does make a difference. So we'll do that with these. All right. So this is older paper, but I loved it. I don't know if you remember. I don't even know what it was called, but it, it went with when um, they introduced this stamp set for the first time before the catalog came out, the Waves of Inspiration. They introduced this really cool paper along with the matching um, oil paper. So that's what I'm using. Oops. All right. So I've already scored um, um, and cut those squares out, but I didn't do that little half part. I figured you might want to see me do that again. All right, so there's half inch increments. Um, there's half inch increments on all four sides. So now I needed to do just a half inch down. And if you missed some of it, just go back and watch the replay. But I'm now I'm just doing a half inch down to this um, score line here, which is probably hard to see on your computer, but there is a score line there. Half inch down there and a half inch down there. And then I'm just going to take my scissors and cut. I'll do it this way first. Just cut that little two block off and then go from this, there's a score line here, this score line right to that corner. And that's your mitered edge. So you do want to try to cut well. I was going a little bit too fast and my mitered edge wasn't perfect. Well, wasn't clean, I should say. All right, oops. So cut those off and one more. I just love this paper. All right, so then it looks like that. And so this is my template. Oops, it goes this way. That fits it. Again, and I said at the beginning, for 3D items, I like to create a template. All right, so let me just fold on all of these and let me see if there's anything in the comments while I'm doing this that I need. All right. Oh, good, you like the idea of the seasonal? Yeah, it's kind of like, I'm sure some of you have those um, flags um, or banners. And you just do it on the inside of your house. Just find a place. So on the um, the one after this that I'm going to show you, which is mostly done, but I'm going to show you that you can actually, I'm going to put um, some linen thread in it so you can hang it up. And I'll show you that T1 again as a way of, I just created like a little backing for, oh, you know how they have those like mini plate trays like or, or stands rather, or a frame. You can just put them in that and I meant to bring it up. I will take a picture of one of these with those so you know what I'm talking about. All right, so then these just curl under. So this one, I'm actually gonna keep this as my back paper. I don't want to hide it because I like it. So I'm actually gonna glue this straight away. So I just want to make sure that the edge is actually on the inside, hitting that edge. And then I take that pencil to push down because it's a hard thing to, otherwise I don't want to collapse it. Oh shoot, I didn't mean to do that side first because I had the mitered edge. That's all right, we'll just kind of sneak this in. 
So I'm going to put a little... So if that happens to you, it's okay. So I put the glue on the side. I'm going to roll that under. But before I tuck it, I'll just put a little glue there. Underneath. I try to do those, the slanted edge sides last. But I was talking to you. <laughs> I got distracted. And I was reading the comments at the same time. I can't do it all at once. Okay. And that's all right. So I can hold that. And that actually makes a 90 degree angle too. And then I can stick the pencil on this side anyways. Kind of press it down. That's the thing though. I, it's hard to let the glue dry. I just want to keep going. All right. Tuck that under. And then put a little glue here, tuck that under. I'm all about showing you my mistakes. I have no problems doing that. But with my mistakes, I like to show you how to fix them. So that doesn't seem to be, here we go. Learn from my errors. Okay. I will make sure I do it correctly on the next one. Look at, I'm making a mess. All right, so I'm gonna hold those. I'm gonna hold those for a second so they stick in the right place. So what else can I tell you while I'm waiting? Let me grab the... So you may have seen, I made some surfboard, and maybe you didn't know what they were. I made some surfboards. Not sure which colors I'm using. And I made some labels because I'm not sure which one I'm using. So we're going to have some choosing here. And I have some waves that we're going to stick on after. All right. My glue was not really sticking. All right. So we're now this is the side we want to do correct. We want to put the ink, the ink, the glue there, tuck that in. Roll it under, and then before we got a little glue there, and the glue there, and now we can roll it over. And now with that fourth one, you can actually kind of hold it all tight in there, and that helps. You can kind of press down a little bit. Just look at that paper. I hope they come out with paper like this again. I just really liked it, and I think how they made it was with um, which they don't sell alcohol inks i think you did it with alcohol inks and um, rubbing alcohol somehow they made that paper and they don't as of right now they don't sell those products but i hope they do someday because to make all that look i like it all right there we go let that dry Whew. okay so now rather than sticking something on the inside i thought we could stick something on the outside look at that I have these two waves that's going to go on the outside and I'm going to trim that and I do have surfboards I thought we could oh, I was going to tuck them under but that's all right I can either do a purple and a blue or I could do two of one color and then I have I wasn't sure how much room we would have kind of like that one all right Maybe we'll do one of each color. And I used the surfboard. Let me show you what I use. This is actually, Anne and I are going to be using this set, this bundle, for our live on next week, which I have not even thought about what I'm making. Um, but here's the surfboard. And the Enjoy Today is from this set as well. Um, and I stamped it, believe it or not, I stamped it on, well, this fun watercolor paper. But it's actually the backs of the bird paper. That is celebration paper, but I liked the texture of it because I thought surfboards kind of needed texture. So that's what I did. I think I'm going to make these actually flat. Originally, when I thought of this, I was actually going to pop them up. I think I'm just going to make them flat because I will pop up the words and then we're going to have the waves popped up. You know how sometimes they stick the surfboards in the sand? That's what I'm thinking. All right, and the Enjoy Today, I'm going to pop that up. I'm just, I made the decision. I'm going to use that one. 
And I'll just do that like a one level because we're going to have those wigs sticking out. And hopefully, let's see, I use my tweezers. I can center it in there. All right. Enjoy today. And then I, when I, these, the dies for the waves, I put also the adhesive sheets on the back because to put glue on these is a pain in the neck. And I am going to peel the whole thing off. And I'm going to stick it down just like I did the letters on the outside. This one, I'm just going to make sure it's on the edge. And, oh, I can close that. Maybe that will help. So it is sticky on the back here. Um, I'm just going to snip this. So, I, you know, so I'm just not going to press it in there. Take this, these adhesive sheets are awesome, especially for something so tiny like these. And I'm going to push this one in a little bit so it's over a little bit. Push that down and then that is going to come down on that one. Oh, squished my box. I'm going to cut that. And just press that down. Look at that. And then I can even, I can actually st stick these two together. Maybe. All right. So there is another version. So here we got a spring. We got a summer. And we're going to do another one. And I think really it could be all year, depending on where you live. One more. And this is the one that I actually shared kind of a picture of. Um, I use the fishing paper. I don't think that's the name of it. I forget what it's called. Um, and I already made my cuts. So I just have to fold down. And you're going to see that this one had um, direction to it of the paper. But I think for this particular pattern, it's okay that some of them are going to be upside down. So the, the oops. The flowers, I'm going to have to figure out how to push that down. The flowers didn't matter for direction. These kind of cool designs didn't matter. But see how these ones have a direction kind of up and down. Oops. Uh-oh, that was part of my gone fishing. Oh, like, all right, we don't need that. All right. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys like them. Good. Yeah, now I just have to find a place to put them in my house, my room. I did not do such a great job scoring this one. All right. I was actually, well, truth be told, while I was working on this prep, I was texting Anne. So it's her fault if anything goes wrong with this one. The other two I had already prepped, and then we were texting each other. So it's all her fault that there's mistakes. <laughs> Let's see if she's still on and caught that, because she'll be cheeky right back at me. All right, there we go. All right. So you can see it all comes in just like the other two. I'll make sure I do that in the right direction. But these are just, you know, flies for fly fishing. So this direction, you know, some of them are kind of upside down, but it doesn't really matter for this. So you just pay attention to your paper. So we're going to make sure we're doing those um, slanted ones last. Let's do this right. Oh, before I do that, I had decided, let's see, I can either, and that's an okay background, but I thought it would be better to have fish because I'm saying gone fishing. Um, so I made, if I wanted to include, let's see. So this one I put in paper, but if I kind of like this paper and I want you to see a little bit of it, so I don't want you to hide it. So you can just cut your square 
Uh, I'll tell you, I wrote it down. The other one I did at four and a quarter. Just trying to put this so you can imagine, so you can kind of see those stripes with the fish. So that way you can kind of get two papers. So you could really layer yours however you want. Like this one, I layered in this paper and then I put snow on top of it. You just want to do all of this kind of work before you put it together because it's, it's hard to tuck in there. But I used my letters for this one and I did a little gone fishing. <laughs> Thought it was kind of cute. And I even texturized, I don't know if you can see it, but I put wood grain and I just cut with my scissors. But I think if I use this smaller one, you're not going to see the fish as much because I like being able to see the stripe behind there. But because this gone fishing is so big, I think I need to use it because you're not going to see the, um, if I use the smaller one with the stripes, which I like, you, but I'm going to lose the fish. Hopefully that made sense. So I'm going to put this in there. This is at four and a quarter square. And that way you won't, you won't see any border. And then this one I cut at three by three. The other thing I'm going to do is put this in first. I'm going to figure out where I want it. Then I'm going to cut it. So I'm doing a little of the construction. And I'm just going to put this right at this folded edge. It's, I might even tilt it a little bit. All right, so that's at that folded edge, so I can still put that down. And these I can put in after. Okay, so now I can put this together. So you just kind of think of what you want your insides to be, and do you need to put it kind of together before you put the frame, you roll the frame together, or can you put it in after? Just got glue on there. All right. I don't think Anne was watching. She would have said something. I'll tell her. There's no secrets. All right, so I have to decide. I can put this as a summer thing. I think it'll be fun, but I need to think of who fishes. My dad used to fish. Let's see if he would want it. Actually, I might give it to my dad. It actually suit the kind of the color scheme of his office. And he's retired now, so... All right, so now I can do, I'm going to put a little glue there, corner, a little glue that, and then roll this under. There we go. So you need the best construction for last. And it does help because it makes this little box. You can press on it a little bit, not too hard, but you can press on it a little bit. You probably even put it. Put a little weight on it. Oh, look at that. All right, so a little glue in that corner. Roll it under. Looking at the time, I'm sorry, this is a long one. So sorry, I didn't think <laughs> that long, but I'm almost done. All right, hold those together. Put that over there as I put. I do use my blocks as weights. All right, so I'm going to put some dimensionals on my little signs here. And I even cut, like, kind of zigz oh, cut zigzag to make um, a little edge. And so what I did to get the idea, I knew I wanted to do something with fishing because I had um, the paper. I just typed in Google gone fishing and then they came up with these little wood signs. I, that's where I got the idea. So it had nothing to do with card making. <gasps> ah, I forgot to put the twine in. Darn it. All right. Well, that's not, I meant to do it before I rolled it, but luckily the glue is still wet. So I'm putting in some linen thread. So you would do this before you put it together. Let's see if I can get it to come out the other way. There it is. 
Oh, darn it. Tweezers. There we go. Whew. Okay, now I'm going to glue it back. <laughs> I meant to do that before I shut it. So if you wanted to hang it, you could put like flat ribbon or this linen thread. Mine's a mess. Um, and that way, you know, you can hang it on a little hook or a door or something. So I'm just going to kind of tie it. And it doesn't, for this purpose, it doesn't even have to be a great tie because, you know, you're going fishing quickly. All right. So there you go. Whew. Luckily, I caught that in time. All right. So let me bring them all back here so you can see what I did here. So these are the three that I just made. All right. Oh, Nancy, <laughs> you should make this look easy. I feel like I did not do that at all, but I'm glad you felt that way. Um, oh, Ann wrote back. <laughs> you could. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. All right. So this is, so these are the fun frames. Again, this is some I made a while ago. Oh, and then I had just taken a piece of cardstock and I found this center and I just put two score lines with like a quarter inch and just attached it with a quarter inch. So then you, I just, you can lean it. So it sits up like that. So you have that option too, to hang it. Um, or, but they have those, you know, those little frame things that you can just put them in. So you, however you want to do it. All right. Whew. That is what I had for you today. There we go. Uh, so thanks very much. Um, I will put in the comments for you, um, if anyone wanted to either purchase the um, tutorial or if you want to order the um, dies, you can get the tutorial for free because that was a question. Um, and thank you. If you are, there were a few new people watching. Um, if you don't receive my emails, I send out emails every Tuesday, sometimes more frequently, but definitely every Tuesday. Um, I think you should sign up. So if you just go to mailsomethingpretty.com, that's my website. There's a box. You can sign up to receive my emails and you'll get a whole bunch of um, cool things. So thanks. I'm glad you liked it. Whew. All right. Worked out good. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys next week twice. I'll see you Tuesday and I'll see you Thursday. All right. Bye-bye.